How you doing guys? <clears throat> Hope everybody's having a good morning. This will be a part two to my last video, but it'll be it'll have a different title. And I want to go over what a commenter said in my last video. So if, if you're watching, uh, I know you see a lot of the verses you sent up here. Some people believe that sending a plethora of verses just even if they have no, they're out of order, even if they don't have any relevance to what you're talking about at all. They think sending a, a huge amount of verses somehow it looks good in the comment section. I noticed this. Some people just do this to try to explain their position. They send a whole bunch of verses. And then when you go through each one, one to two or maybe even three might have some relevancy to what you were saying. But the rest of them are, they completely have no relevancy whatsoever. It's not relevant to the conversation. But I guess somehow they feel sending a whole bunch of verses makes them look like they know what they're talking about. I, but you don't. I mean, I, I went through all these verses. I'm going to explain this today. So there's a growing heresy out here. And it. I'm not going to call it new. It's probably not new. As I said on my last video, of those that, again, I don't know what to call this, um, it leads into universalism. A group of people that believe, I'm assuming, and I could have I could have assumed you wrong, guy. Um, I'm not going to say your name. That you also believe the nation of Israel has been forgiven as well. Now, if that's not what you're saying, then that's fine. But you definitely said that you believe the world is forgiven in the next dispensation, which is completely makes no sense at all. There's no verse verses to validate that. But this is what you sent. And there were more verses, but I just didn't, I didn't feel like I, I went through a lot of these verses and I don't believe they're relevant to what I was talking about. So I'm going to focus on the first three. But the point is, you believe, and not just you, there's, a, there's other YouTube channels devoted to this, that the world has been forgiven in the next dispensation as well. Now, we're in the dispensation of grace, okay? I believe that, of course, the world was forgiven at the cross through Christ's shed blood. And if you go to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 19, where we're going to go to that, it says, God has not been imputing the world's sins world's trespasses so everyone's sins today are forgiven so this person believes this so what i'm talking about today is not a salvation issue but it does become a problem when you go into the next dispensation when you're looking at things in the next dispensation this person and the people that believe like him are confusing are confused and are actually misleading others the world is not completely forgiven in the next dispensation. The one yet to come, there's no verse in the Bible that says the entire world is also forgiven there. There's no verse that even says that. Now, what this person has done is they, they have failed to rightly divide. I said in my last video, people take 2 Corinthians 5, 19 and attempt to put it in the dispensation of grace. I mean, uh, it is in the dispensation of grace, my bad. It is right now. But they attempt to put it in the next dispensation. 2 Corinthians 5.19 only belongs in the dispensation of grace, our dispensation. You can't take that and put it into the next dispensation, which is what this person that had the comment, the comments on my last video, was attempting to do. If you say you claim you know how to rightly divide the word of truth, why are you doing that? Why are you putting 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19 into the next dispensation with books like Hebrews through Revelation? Did Paul write Hebrews through Revelation? Oh, let me guess. Are you one of those people that believe that? I'll do that on another channel, uh, another video proving to you without the shadow of a doubt. Paul did not write any of those books, Hebrews through Revelation. He did not write a single one. So 2 Corinthians 5 19 does not belong in the next dispensation. You can't find it in Hebrews or 1 John or 1 Peter. You can't find it any you can't find it any of the books from Hebrews to Revelation. It's not there. This is not in the next dispensation. So attempting to put that in the next dispensation is why you're confused. 
you are being rebellious and 100% choosing to say that, well, in the next dispensation, God is not imputing trespass. That's what you're choosing to do. You're lying to yourself. You're lying to others. You're just being completely rebellious. God never said that. You have forgotten how to rightly divide the word of truth. Or maybe you do know, but this is one of those topics that you're just blatantly being rebellious on. Keep 2 Corinthians 5, 19 and 21 where it is in Paul's epistles. Don't attempt to put them anywhere else. If you do, you are a hyper dispensationalist. If you attempt to put these verses somewhere in the future, in the next dispensation, you are a hyper dispensationalist. That's what you are. You might as well go join the likes of Rodney uh, Bulliger. Might as well go join Gene Kim, who's talking about you can remove the, like, remove the mark of the beast. That's what he said. Um, might as well join Robert Breaker. These are all hyper dispensationalists. These are people that go beyond. You might as well go join them. And you probably will. You'll probably feel attacked. Uh, I'm not attacking you, but I am showing you you're in error. Bad. So, I'm going to go first to Revelation 20.13. Because this is the verse that they choose to say choose to support what they're talking about. Now, let me ask you a question. Is Revelation a book Paul wrote? No. God did not move Paul to write Revelation. Revelation, John was writing that book. Okay, so already this should be assigned to you. Are, is Revelation in the dispensation of grace? No. So does Revelation have anything to do with us? No. But again, hyper-dispensationalists don't believe this. Hyper-dispensationalists believe there's things in Revelation that do affect us. No, it doesn't. There's nothing in Revelation that affects me. Oh, oh, why, why about your name in the book of life, Brandon? Why about your name in the book of life? You want that to? Nope, that has nothing to do with me. God didn't say my name was in the book of life or needed to be in the book of life. That's in a whole nother dispensation. That has nothing to do with me. I don't need to be in the book of life to get saved. That's literally what somebody at Hope Bible Church, I forgot his name, actually insisted. He said, like, you gotta, your name better be in the book of life. Everybody's in the dispensation of grace. Your name's in the book of life. What? What? What is he talking about? See how, what he just did? He just intermingled two dispensations. No, we are separate from that. We're separate from everything in Revelation. What happens when a person, how a person today in a dispensation of grace gets saved? They believe the gospel, they're saved. It has nothing to do about being in the book of life. That is separate. That's not for you. Those rules for what? Rules in another time period. That's what a dispensation is. And revelation is different than the dispensation of grace. Okay? But you people out there that claim you know how to 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19, you really don't because you're intermingling things from other dispensations. Keep it separate. Keep it separate. If you can't do this, you are not rightly dividing the word of truth. If you are, if you are intermingling things, if you are taking things from another dispensation and putting it in ours, and taking things from our dispensation and putting it on another, you are not rightly divided in the word of truth. You're not. I don't know what you are. You are a heretic. That's what I know for sure. And you are preaching heresy. That's what you're preaching. But you don't care. Most of you people don't care that you're preaching heresy. You, you've been enlightened and you believe you've been shown the light. Ah, you believe you've seen something that just defies 2 Corinthians 5, 19. No, no, Brandon, I, I promise I've seen something that it applies in our dispensation as well. Now, are there things that are trans-dispensational that go across all dispensations? Yes. God? God goes across all dispensations? Yeah. But that does not mean things, blatant things, like what I'm going to talk about today, like 2 Corinthians 5, 19, Oh, well, that's trans-dispensational too. How? 
How's it transdispensational? It's not. You're just saying and you're just lying. So it really irks me when people do that. But let's read this. Revelation 20, verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to this work, to their works. This is what they use to try to say, see, Brandon, nobody's going to be judged for sin. So you trying to say those that take the mark of the beast in tribulation are going to go to hell. You're just wrong, buddy. You're just, you're just wrong. You're just wrong. I mean, because how could God judge them for committing the sin of the mark of the beast in the next dispensation? When Revelation 20, verse 13 says, and the sea gave up the dead, which were in it, and death and hell delivered up, and the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Hmm. So again, it goes back to Revelation 20 verse 13. It has nothing to do with us, but you want to say it does. Okay, have you ever thought about this? Just think about this. Those that take the mark of the beast in Revelation will go to hell. And then what we just read, this is everyone that was not found written in the book of life. They're going to be sent to the lake of fire. Okay, the guy that took the mark of the beast, committed that sin in the next dispensation, goes to hell. Then what happens? God brings him out of hell to judge him for his what? Judge for according to their works. The guy that was just sent to hell for taking the mark of the beast is taken out to be judged according to their works. And then what? Sent to the lake of fire. Hmm. So maybe the answer is both. Maybe, maybe it's both. So in the tribulation, if you take the mark of the beast, which is a sin, a sin that Christ did not forgive at all. Some people are actually insinuating Christ forgave the mark of the beast sin. That's just blasphemous. I mean, how I never committed the mark of the beast sin. We, we can't commit it anyway, just so you understand that. It's only applied in tribulation. No, I do not believe Christ died on the cross for the mark of the beast sin. I don't believe he died on the cross for the mark of the beast sin. I don't believe he forgave the mark of the beast sin. There are people actually trying to say, no, Brandon, he forgave all sins across all dispensations. So even in the next dispensation, Brandon, the mark of the beast sin is forgiven. See, that's because they're, you know why they're confused? They're taking things for our dispensation. Yes, all of our sins were forgiven at the cross through Christ's shed blood. Go to Ephesians 1 verse 7. Give me one second. All right, making sure this is working. Christ died on the cross for all of our sins. Yes. Go to 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4. He died for our sins and buried and rose again the third day. What about the next, the people in the next tribulation? I mean, not next year, people in the next dispensation. What about them? It works differently for them. Christ did not at the cross already forgive all of their sins. Sorry, it didn't happen. For those in tribulation, they will get their forgiveness another way. What are they going to have to do? I said in the last video, if you're a Gentile, and let me just add this. Someone has accused me of saying that you have to, that I'm saying salvation in the next dispensation is you must become a Jew. No, it's not. But becoming a Jew is a consequence of it. If you're in the next dispensation, that I'm talking about tribulation time period, that time, and you are a Gentile during that time period, and nothing changes, you never believe the everlasting gospel, that is what you have to believe to be saved. Okay, but the whole becoming a Jew thing is a consequence of that. When a Gentile believes the everlasting gospel in the next dispensation, what will happen to them? When they believe the everlasting gospel, they become a Jew. It's just a consequence. I am not saying become a Jew to be saved. I'm saying when a person believes the everlasting gospel in the next dispensation, they will become a Jew. So I was accused of that. So I don't, I just like people just not understanding what I'm saying. 
wrote it up very clear on the board. But I don't know. Satan is the prince of the air, so I guess they're hearing it another way. The brain's not working. I don't know. So I just wanted to say that. But going back to what's going on, those in the next dispensation, those that take the mark of the beast, they will go to hell for taking it. They will go to hell because they committed that sin, which God is not going to forgive in the dispensation, uh, next dispensation. It's not going to happen. Therefore, what you're saying as far as all of their sins have been forgiven in the next dispensation, it breaks apart. And actually what you're doing when you're saying that, you're giving people like Rodney or any of these other people that claim to rightly divide, you're giving them ammunition to try to destroy what I've been saying on this channel. Just try to say, see, this guy's over here saying those that take the mark of the beast is forgiven. He's insane. There's no way all of his sins were forgiven at the cross through Christ shed blood. No, our sins were forgiven at the Christ through Christ shed blood, at the cross through Christ shed blood. What that guy is saying, I don't describe to what a heretic is saying. He's saying those that take the mark of the beast have all been forgiven. That's insane. So, but it's because they don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth. In the next dispensation, anyone that takes the mark of the beast will be going to hell because they committed that sin. Then God will take them out of hell, judge them according to their works. They're going to fail. And then they're going to be going to the lake of fire. It's both. See what happens when you choose one side? For example, if I was to say, no, no, those in tribulation take the mark of the beast because they commit that sin, they're going, they're, they're going to the lake of fire. Well, that would be wrong. They're going to hell. They're not going to the lake of fire because they take the mark of the beast. They're going to hell. But lake of fire is the what? Second death. So it's another judgment. The guy that took the mark of the beast will be taken out of hell. And then what happens next? He goes to the lake of fire. He's going to be judged according to his words. He's going to be found guilty. And he's going to go to the lake of fire. See, if you take one position or the other, you make yourself look strange. You, you look, I mean, this, what you're saying is it doesn't make any sense. If you say, no, no one that takes the mark of the beast will go to hell in the tribulation because all their sins have been forgiven. Even the mark of the beast. If you, if that's your position for the world, that's what you're saying. And the tri during the tribulation period, you're making God out to be a liar. You're making God out to be bipolar. Because let's go to Revelation 14, 9 through 11. <clears throat> And they have breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings. Let me hold on. So I'm reading the wrong one. Revelation 14. And the Lord angel followed them, saying and with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. But Brandon, this, the mark of the beast sin has been forgiven. Then why is God going to torture these people that take it? The people that take the mark of the beast will be tortured, will be tormented with fire and brimstone, tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the mark 